Hello and welcome. You have tuned into Buy Now, Sell Now on ET Now. I'm Shruti Sharma and with me today is Vinny Motiwala. And viewers, this is the show where you get answers for all your stock-related queries. In a short while from now, we will get all your stock-related queries answered by the experts where you get a chance to connect with us live. But before that, let's have a quick look what the markets are up to. So, Vinny, the markets continue to be volatile and it's the India Wix which is once again inching higher while the benchmark indices is drifting lower. Absolutely, not only the benchmark indices, we've seen the broader markets today not participating. Yesterday we had seen broader mm. markets at least closing on the positive side, yeah. managing to hold it somewhere of a green, but today that's also not happening. So yes, the Nifty mid small cap trading almost near the day's lowest point. Nifty too is trading near the lowest point of the day. 22,140 levels is what it's trading at currently, down um, seven-tenth of a percent in trade. At one point of time during the day, it managed to come to that green side, but then look at it. Nothing. We've just seen that fall intensifying through the day. Um, Sector-wise, also nothing exciting that's happening. Um, PSCs, uh, energies, pharma, metals, all of them are trading in the red. Nifty Auto, that's where some bit of a green is what we are managing to hold on to in the markets. That's the only place where we're seeing some bit of brightness uh, for the screen. But... Um, even now when you look at Mannapuram Finance, Muthut Finance, the school financiers, they have been a bit subdued in trade after we got in as, uh, some information that uh, there's an advisory note that's come in for the gold loan and BFC. So yes, that's something that we are keeping an eye out on today. Muthut Finance though recovered from the day's lowest point. But yes, Shushti, that's how the market is looking like, uh, you know, bit of a redness on the screen today. Except for the auto pack where we're seeing some bit of a green twinning with the sector yeah. analyst is what I should say, at least for the auto pack. But yes, that's Thanks to the good earnings. Then. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but definitely a quite a cheer in the auto space. Like just a while back while I was looking at the top gainers, mm. out of the top 10 gainers, 6 were auto companies beat m and Tata Motors, Hero Motocorp, TBS. All are seeing great gains in today's trading session. But that's it, uh, viewers. Let's move on and let's focus to some of the earnings then. And we're going to be talking about the earnings of Arvind Limited. And to talk more on that, we are being joined by uh, Puneet Lal Bhai, who is the pi, uh, vice chairman of the company. Um, hi, uh, Puneet. Thank you so much for joining us today on ET Now. Uh, first of all, um, if we talk about your guidance, then guidance for an uh, overall double-digit revenue growth for FY25 that you have um, given to all the experts out there. But this is to be powered by AMD as well as your garment business. Talk to us about the strategy going ahead. Um, what gives you the confidence to achieve this guidance in the time ahead? So we had a good quarter. We had we posted already a double digit uh, growth this quarter, and I think the double digit growth is driven predominantly by better demand globally in all our segments, both textiles and AMD. In the textile segment, the first half of last year was all about inventory correction and a very cautious environment. Now, finally, the world has pivoted towards thinking about growth. So we feel that for our textiles business, uh, growth will come from improved demand uh, overall and also some of our new garment care capacities kicking in and driving volumes up. So both volumes and better demand should drive growth in textiles and AMD is a very strong um, segment and has been historically also strong so that journey of strength will continue in AMD and we should be able to grow at that 20% mark or slightly better. Hi, Puneet. Good morning. This is Vinny joining in the conversation as well. You know, let's talk about some demand trends, right? Q3, FI24 onwards, seems like the demand has bottomed out for the textile business. And now one could expect that improvement. Do you think this improvement that we are seeing and foreseeing, that will continue in FI25? And uh, this momentum is something that is sustainable as well as uh, what is your thought in terms of the demand trend? I would be cautiously optimistic. I think there are a lot of headwinds globally in terms of conflicts going on at several places. Europe not having fully recovered from the uh, shocks uh, of energy and uh, uh, demand destruction due to the war situation. So I would be cautiously optimistic because for the first time in many quarters, we have seen the narrative change. Uh, fourth quarter onwards 
of last year uh, from inventory reduction, cutting down sourcing, consolidation, to a little bit of growth, especially in North America and India. These are the two markets where we're seeing that growth um, that kind of helps us move away from that older narrative to a slightly better narrative. All right, Puneet, um, if you are sufficiently stocked on the cotton for now, uh, like, can we expect the working capital to like come down in Q1 of FY25? So yes, uh, as as and when the, we work through that cotton inventory, working capital level should come down, unless of course there is another need to take a strategic call. We feel that our overall working capital efficiency is good despite the higher inventories on cotton. So it's not a concern area for us. Also, you know, does the company have plans to reduce the overall net debt gradually, especially uh, with the reduction in when you talk about the long-term debt? And what is the planned increase in terms of CAPEX for the newer projects going forward in uh, the AMD segment, garment segment? And are you happy with the current debt levels? We are very comfortable with the current debt levels. Last year also, we reduced about 250 crores of long-term debt. Now the business is in growth mode, so we 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 will see working capital go up. However, we are not very aggressively trying to pay down debt right now. Now we feel that the debt is in in very comfortable territory, and we will grow. We will continue to use our free cash flow that we generate for growth. Um, now that we are quite comfortable with the overall debt. Lastly, um, also, Paneet, if you could uh, give us an update on the CAPEX for the new projects and their contribution in the AMD as well as the garment segment. We had guided that we should be spending around 600 crores across two years. Last year, we spent about 260-odd uh, crores on, on CAPEX. This year, we should spend the balance plus perhaps looking at uh, some positive developments on the opportunity front, we might end up spending a little bit more than 600 crores across the two years. Puneet, you know, multiple roles there, Vice Chairman at Anup Engineering also. So, you know, let's talk about An Anup Engineering then a little bit. And, you know, when you talk about it, you have recently acquired that 100% stake in uh, Mabel Engineering. Tell us about how this new plant is uh, complementing your existing capacities. What could we expect in terms of synergies for your top line? Certainly. So Mabel gives us uh, a strategic presence in South India. Also, the way Mabel is structured is it's ideal for smaller vessels with uh, special metallurgy. Uh, and that complements our capabilities. It also makes a few products that we at uh, our Gujarat locations don't make. So from a product perspective, from a location perspective, and from a strategic perspective to efficiently do smaller but more complicated metallurgies, it gives us an advantage. Currently, Mabel is around that 50 crore mark, but we expect it to continue to remain 10 to 12% of our overall revenue. As we grow here, we should also be, grow, be able to grow at Mabel. Uh, there is plenty of headroom to grow there as well in terms of space and in terms of uh, utilization of the current assets. So it's a good strategic uh, fit for us. And that's why we have considered it and uh, gone ahead with the acquisition. Uh, also, Puneet, for a noop engineering, we have seen good growth in your financials as well. So but, uh, what is the growth momentum that you see in the times ahead, especially in the top line, as well as what is the overall outlook for the next three years if, if we uh, want to pencil in that growth? So we have a very healthy order book going into this year. So our guidance of a 20% plus, uh, 20, close to, closer to 25% growth on, on top line is, is intact. Um, the way you should look at our margins is that they will continue to remain above that 20% mark. So we are currently at that 22, 23% mark. It should be there and thereabouts. So uh, and uh, as we as we get into more complex metallurgies, we may earn more 
per square meter under the crane, but because of the raw material impact, the margins may change by half a basis point, one basis point, but we, we are guiding uh, reasonably stable margins also. So very good growth with stable margins is how you should look at the year coming ahead. You know, Puneet, just a last question in terms of exports. Uh, can we expect the share of exports to increase uh, in your overall order book buy in FY25 for Anup Engineering? I think the share of exports is already quite healthy at uh, 40%. Uh, yeah, I mean, 31% direct exports and 10% deem deemed exports might marginally improve from here. Ideally, we would like a 50-50 uh, mix and we're working towards uh, that goal. However, at our current order book, uh, it looks like we will come close to that figure. Okay, Puneet, thank you so much for joining in with us this morning on ET Now and talking to us about Arvind Limited as well as our Anup Engineering and talking to us about what we should be expecting. That was uh, the Vice Chairman of Arvind Limited, Anup Engineering, Puneet Lalbhai, joining in with us this morning. But with that, let's just slip into a very short break. Don't go anywhere, viewers, because after the break, we will be taking all your stock-related queries. So do start sending us all your stock-related queries on the number that will be flashing on your screens. Welcome back and you're watching Buy Now, Sell Now on ET Now. This is the time where we start taking all your stock-related queries. So do start sending us your queries. And our experts for today, we do have Kunal Botra joining in with us uh, on the technicals. While for the fundamental queries, we do have Vivek Karwa joining in with us this morning. Uh, very good uh, morning, gentlemen. Thank you so much, as always, for removing time and solving all our viewers' stock-related query. Uh, Vivek, let's start with the first query. This query is coming in from... Uh, me Mecca from UAE and a couple of stock names have given. They want to know the fundamentals of how uh, they're looking for this stock and should they invest in any of these stocks for the long term, Vivek. Uh, Remedium Life Care, Suraj Products and Lloyd Enterprises. Any of these looking attractive to you on the fundamentals? See, the other two companies, there is Remedium I'll uh, come ahead, but the other two companies looks like uh, are uh, not that much tracked and I'm not aware about those uh, uh, fundamentals. But Remedium uh, overall, again, a micro cap, in fact, uh, I should say a penny cap uh, company under 1000 crores market capitalization. And uh, company seems uh, doing some uh, good thing in uh, advanced uh, intermediates among the uh, pharma sector. Now, uh, valuation wise also, it looks uh, quite uh, attractive at this 93, 94 levels. It is uh, within a range, that is, it goes uh, approximately to 110 and then again comes to 90. So I feel uh, at these levels, you can uh, add very, very small quantities. As I said, it's a penny cap and uh, the movements can be very, very volatile. So buy at this uh, prices, possibly you can get uh, max, max 120. All right, moving on then. And Kunal, the first query that I have for you is on HCL Tech. Suresh from Ludhiana uh, has been holding 300 shares of HCL Tech and his buy price is 950 rupees. And he also has BEL uh, at, from an average price of 162 rupees. Um, should he keep both of these stocks for the next three years? And if yes, then any targets to look out for as well? Well, in fact, I would probably suggest a bit of a contrast strategy. So I think BEL uh, on the monthly charts... Apparently, has gone back into a very uh, overbought territory and that's why I think you're seeing the stock struggling a bit over the last uh, you know, few weeks where I think around 235 to 40 odd range is acting as a resistance for the stock price. So, maybe I think closer to that level uh, you know, is where the stock seems to have a major resistance and I think that's where you could probably look to book profits since you bought at much lower levels. Uh, HCL Tech on the other hand is already going through a sharp correction over the last uh, you know, few weeks and IT sector as such has been an underperforming spree. I would just believe that uh, maybe wait out for a breakout confirmation about the 200 DMA for HCL Tech and whenever that happens, that level is around 1400 levels for the stock. So whenever the stock crosses about that 1400 mark is where I would believe that there could be a higher degree of confidence to hold on to the stock. As of now, hold, but a higher degree confidence could be probably be established about the 1400 levels for HCL Tech. Okay, let's move on to this next query uh, from Akshay from Bangalore. Uh, so, you know, Vivek, they're making 200% profit on Tata Motors. They want to know, should they shift from Tata Motors to Happiest Minds? And also, if they want to add some more money, uh, HDFC Life, HDFC Bank or ICICI Bank, what's looking good for the long term? See, I would advise uh, even making profits out of Tata Motors. Uh, 
uh, say in COVID uh, times, I had bought the stock at 80 levels something and uh, sold it around 1000 levels. I think at this prices, uh, most of the positive factors of uh, over next two years is already factored in. And uh, overall, yeah, company is doing well and uh, they are moving towards becoming debt-free company also. But uh, as I said, uh, uh, things have been uh, factored in. And uh, going forward, again, they are trying to uh, split the company. So after a split, I, I think at least that split happens, the stock prices might more, not move uh, much. So uh, book profits in Tata Motors also. Uh, happiest minds would be a word from my side uh, because uh, IT still looks uh, quite dicey to me. And I would uh, suggest you uh, take all this money and invest in HDFC Bank and ICIC Bank. I would still avoid uh, HDFC Life too. So HDFC Bank and ICIC Bank would be a good bet. All right. Uh, that's the day coming in on a couple of counters. But uh, Kunal, the next query is an FNO query. And this one is from Manish Bhatt from Ahmedabad. Um, he wants your view on two uh, metal counters. Firstly is NMDC. He has bought two lots and uh, his buy price is 259 rupees. And he also has Vedanta, one lot in futures, bought at a price of 393 rupees. In both of these, uh, what's your view? Um, he just wants your view on both of these uh, stocks that he's holding. So, uh, you know, uh, these seem to be more performing stocks uh, and um, my assumption is that uh, maybe your uh, time of purchase could have been, uh, you know, some time back and not very, very recently like in the last two, one or two days. So, I think if that's the case, then I think you've seen good part of the trend for both the stocks, NMDC as well as Vedanta. Now, the, the concern for the stock is that they've, uh, you know, they, they, they've shown signs of, uh, you know, uh, withdrawal of momentum for themselves. So, the momentum which was very strong, say uh, end of April, just about start of couple of days of the month of May, that has now gone back for uh, you know, these names. So maybe we could be at a point where these stocks may be a bit more sideways. I would suggest that uh, the best way to try and uh, you know, trade these kind of stocks is have a trailing stop loss, which could be marginally higher than your cost price. Uh, so I think that's, that's where I would probably believe that you can continue to hold on. Expect that once this mild phase of consolidation gets over, these stocks could probably uh, get back into the thick of momentum. But having a trailing stop loss in this kind of a market environment, which is extremely volatile, I think would be an ideal strategy. Uh, Kunal Gaurav from Bangalore wants to know what's the right entry price for something like an REC BHEL? So, you know, for, for the first time, we're seeing a lot of volatility coming back into the likes of RSE. For example, these were low beta names. Even on the uptrend, these stocks had seen very low amount of volatility. But in the last five, seven days, we've seen some uh, exceptional, very high volume trading, which is happening for the stock price. Uh, in this kind of a scenario, I think I would probably expect that once the volatility subsides and the stocks come back to a mean reversion, that could be a point where you may look to buy. So, for example, for REC, that level could be 480, 475 approximately uh, as the first tranche where you can look to buy. And for BHL, I would probably believe 255 to 60 could be a better level. That would be uh, also coinciding with the 50-day moving average respectively for both of the stocks. All right, then moving on. And um, Vivek, hi, very good morning. The next query that I have is coming from Carol. And uh, he, uh, she wants a view on Ashok Leyland. Uh, she has bought these shares at a price of close to 180 rupees. Uh, is that a hold or sell at this point in time? And she also wants a view on DLF. Uh, will that be a good buy even at current levels? Uh, good morning, Shristi. Uh, see, Ashok Leyland, uh, in your sister channel, in VIP stocks, I have given it a couple of times uh, since 170 levels that it to 220. Now it went about 200 and now uh, corrected back. I feel uh, you should hold on to the stock and if you don't have, you should uh, buy it as well. Uh, the way company is performing right now and the way the company is entering into the EV space of uh, buses as well. See what happened is uh, uh, off late would have uh, seen the news that Electra has been uh, I said either penalized or they're not able to supply the number of buses which have been ordered. Now if all state governments across India start doing this, uh, Electra and uh, JBM Autos of the world are very, very small companies wherein uh, they might not be able to cater to demand. So then comes the uh, active role of uh, Tata Motors and Ashok Leland. So Ashok Leland is going to be a big thing. I think you should hold it on. Uh, the other company was, uh, I spoke so much, I forgot. <laughs> DLF for a fresh entry. Sorry? DLF for a fresh entry. Okay. So uh, DLFC, uh, overall uh, real estate, I think looks uh, good even at uh, these prices. Yeah, DLF uh, actually is at stretched valuations, but on every dip, I would suggest that you should uh, slow and steadily uh, buy it. Uh, it would, uh, uh, I think, not go below 800 levels. Uh, and real estate, as I said, uh, I am bullish on. 
So if it comes to 800 levels, please uh, add more. And uh, if you are already holding it, just hold it for long time. Okay, surely keeping an eye on that. Uh, Kunal, this next query we have uh, is from Subramaniam from Thane. They want to know for Angel One. They're holding 100 shares at a price of 3,000 rupees per share. Um, should they continue to hold or exit? Well, you know, for the first time, I think the last uh, so many months, I think if I'm not wrong, in the last one year approximately, the stock had uh, has fallen below the 200 DMA this time around. So that could probably uh, indicate that maybe the near term to uh, medium term charts could now start to show signs of weakness for Angel 1. I would not suggest an exit as of now, but I think, uh, you know, what you can do is intraday rallies. So, you know, for example, if the stock comes back towards 2600 to 2800 kind of a zone, that could be a territory where we look to, uh, you know, uh, reduce your holdings on the stock price because with this kind of a weakness in trend, if the stock sustains below this 200 day moving average, say for the next one or two weeks, you can see a further round of correction to the stock. All right, then uh, that's the view coming in on Angel One. But with this view, it's time to slip into a very short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Buy Now, Sell Now, a show where we get you answers for all your stock-related queries. And continuing the same, uh, the next query that I have, uh, Vivek, is coming from Lakshmi. And she's holding Balme Lori, 800 shares from a price of 60 rupees. And she also has KPI Green Energy, 16 shares at a price of 1870 rupees. Um, is that a hold on both of these companies? Or uh, since Balmain Laurie is giving good returns um, to her as of now, so would you advise to book out some profits here? Laurie is basically a government of India company and uh, into various sectors, uh, especially into packaging, uh, lubricants, uh, they are also into logistics, chemicals, and they also have uh, something called uh, Travels Exotica, which is a travel company. So many businesses into uh, one, and the price is still not uh, fully played out. That is one thing. Now, so it becomes a short, short hold and uh, a buy also for uh, longer term under market capitalization of 5,000 crores, which is uh, again attractive. And there's one more uh, holding company of Palma Lorry. I don't know how many of you are aware. But uh, there's a company called Balma Lorry Investments. Now, that company is almost trading at 50% the valuations or the NAV of uh, Balma Lorry. So, that company holds Balma Lorry and trading at 50%. At some point of time, uh, that it will either uh, get merged or uh, say uh, the unlocking will uh, play out. At that point of time, we'll make uh, more returns in Balma Lorry Investment than Balma Lorry. So, holding both are equally holding each company, but Balma Lorry will be more interesting. So, you should look at that company. KPI uh, Green. Uh, See, I would be little cautious at these levels because valuations look uh, a bit stressed. Overall, uh, on power, I am uh, bullish. So, on dips, it could be a good bet. But uh, at these prices, I would advise a uh, little bit of profit, at least on rallies. Okay. Uh, Kunal, this next query is from Sutesh from Kerala. They're holding uh, Paramal Pharma at a, a price of 142 rupees. What should they be doing with this? Hold, sell or uh, maybe look to add some more? So I think it's a good quality stock. Uh, at least recently we've seen the stock trending up higher from uh, 65, 70 odd levels towards uh, almost 155, 160 approximately was the high the stock made recently. So I think in terms of the recent price trends, it's been quite strong. Uh, you know, uh, I'm assuming that if the stock doesn't, uh, you know, succumb towards this market pressure and the sudden bout of volatility, the uptrend could still be intact for the stock. So you'll probably have to, uh, you know, maybe play for a two-pronged strategy where in case if the stock tips down, say, comes back towards 135 to 140 kind of a range, look to average out further. And on the upside, I would probably keep, uh, you know, closer to 170, 175 as an immediate target for the stock. All right, then uh, moving on, uh, the next query that I have, Kunal, is coming on is Scott's Kubota. Uh, the results are also due today, but KVG Rao, um, who has already bought 1,000 shares, and he's saying that his buy price is just 224 rupees. Um, great returns uh, for Scott's Kubota. Uh, still a hold or exit? I think it's still a hold. The stock has done exceptionally well. Even recently, I think if I'm not wrong, just about last month, or so the stock had fallen down to sub 3000 levels but the recovery has been just phenomenal for escorts that itself indicates the pedigree of the stock price so major retracements towards 200 day moving average should be taken as a good opportunity to average but it's a hold from long term play okay uh, adani total gas vivek that's the next query on uh, the viewer is holding 1000 shares of adani total gas and this is at a price of around 1005 
should they continue to hold this for the long term, next two, three years? What is your understanding here? See, you have no other option. Uh, you're almost uh, made your prop, uh, say, capital 50%. And at that point of time, also, I was telling the stock is looking uh, very, very costly. It was, uh, I think, 200 odd uh, P something. Today's date, it is 130, 130 or 135 uh, P approximately. Even that is very, very costly. But what I feel is uh, going forward, the way companies are uh, progressing should uh, continue doing well. So this uh, P adjustment might uh, take at least three years to uh, happen. So you'll have to wait for next two or three years uh, for your price to come back. All right, uh, Kunal, the next query is from Srinath. Uh, this one is specifically for you because um, Srinath is holding 200 shares of HPL Electric. I'm not sure whether you track this one or not, but just on the charts, if you can guide him on the short-term targets, his buy price is 400 rupees. So I'm using it's a stock which is uh, currently almost at 399 to 400 levels. And uh, my assumption is that your purchase is very, very recent because 400 has been just crossed uh, you know, for the stock price very recently. Uh, volumes have been on the higher side and so far the stock has uh, is still trading about the 200 and the 50 day moving average. Long term trends are very attractive. The only bigger concern for this kind of a stock is that it's already done up from I think 2020 lows where the stock was almost at 35, 30 odd uh, you know, rupees towards the point when the stock had hit the 400 level. So which means it's already gone up 10x in that kind of a uh, you know, time frame in 3 years, 4 years. So I'm not sure whether you're looking at a, a further multiplication in the next three to four years. So you'll have to probably keep your stop losses a bit uh, more tighter in this kind of a scenario. But so far, it looks attractive. Uh, you can hold on with uh, a positional trading stop loss of maybe 375. Sure. The next query is on Mannapuram Finance Awake. Now, obviously, today we do have a news flow for Mannapuram Muthut that is coming in that RBI has asked these NBFCs to restrict cash disbursements. Uh, but apart from that, if you are looking at it for the long term, Balkrishna wants to know from Chennai, uh, who's from Chennai, wants to know that Mannapuram Finance as well as IDBI Bank, is it a good play for the long term? See, IDB, in fact, uh, if you look at Manapuram Finance also, valuation-wise, it looks quite uh, attractive, very, very attractive. I, but I still would suggest only those who can take risk uh, uh, to hold uh, this kind of companies right now. Now, see, the the uh, uh, slate is very, very clear. RBI is very, very strict on uh, KYC front. In fact, there is a lot of KYC mess happening even in uh, investments in our uh, field. Uh, mutual funds are really suffering at this point of time. And I think uh, this is going to get only stricter uh, going forward. So uh, it would be a avoid uh, as of now from me because uh, I don't know what kind of action might uh, come afterwards. So you don't know. You're just uh, shooting in uh, dark. IDBA bank, yeah, you can uh, hold on. At these levels, uh, should be a good bet. And uh, once the government is formed, I think uh, the privatization process also should uh, start uh, uh, would uh, kick off again. So that would uh, bring in some positive moments to IDBA Bank. So IDBA Bank is a hold or a buy also for long term. Manapuram right now avoid only because of regulatory changes which might actually come in. All right. Uh, moving on then. And uh, Vivek, once again coming to you, this query is on Spark. Uh, we all know uh, that uh, the stock has been falling and he's been in tremendous pressure after the company announced that one of their uh, drug trials related to Parkinson disease has been halted. And in the past one month, we have seen a 50% correction, at least in Spark. But since the last couple of days, that, um, that chain of lower circuit is now halted as well. And the stock is trying to uh, breathe once again. Again, what is the outlook on Spark, uh, Vivek? Because Siddharth has been holding 200 shares, but his buy price is 90 rupees. So he's still at profit. So what's the outlook going ahead? See, I think after 50% correction, the downside is uh, minimal or uh, uh, not, uh, it's no longer there. So either it should uh, consolidate at these prices or slowly again uh, start recovering. Now, uh, I think is, uh, this is a unique uh, company wherein you bet a lot of money into uh, research. And if research uh, is successful, you really, uh, say, mint money or you lose uh, capitalization like this. So that is what has happened. So going forward, as you said, uh, what is the outlook? I don't know what uh, the research is going to uh, give the result at the end. So that no one has idea. Uh, but yeah, at these prices, I think the downside is minimal. So you can continue holding up. Kunala. Uh, Bridger Farm uh, wants to know on BPCL, they're holding BPCL at a price of 618. Should they continue to hold this? What's the view? 
Well, long term wise, uh, I think it could be a good strategy to hold on to the stock. Use, uh, you know, maybe a broad 10% uh, correction as a good buying opportunity or an averaging opportunity for BPCL. All right, that's about uh, BPCL. But moving on, the next query that I have is on JSW Energy as well as JSW Infra. And Vivek uh, Chanda uh, from Tirupati wants to know that any of the stock that you like at this point in time uh, for a fresh investment where she can invest for the next three years. Now, again, see, if you look at uh, uh, overall uh, valuations of JSW Energy, also it's quite uh, stretched. I would uh, say if you, if you really... So what was happening sometime back uh, in railway stocks, in defense stocks, uh, they they really went, uh, uh, the valuations went overboard and then finally the correction uh, came in and today's date, many investors are struck uh, in both the sectors. So uh, sometimes this can happen and uh, this will happen in energy sector as well, I feel so. Though I am very, very bullish on uh, long term, but I would still prefer uh, stocks like Power Grid or RECs or NTPCs of the world wherein the valuation comfort also is there. And uh, the uh, outlook also looks uh, quite good. Yeah, JSW Energy, fundamentally, it is a good company, but valuation-wise, it is a bit stressed. So if it goes uh, to 450 levels, I would be comfortable. If 540, really, uh, on every rally, I would uh, book profit. Okay, on that note, let's just slip into a very short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with most of your stock-related queries after the break. Welcome back. You're watching Buy Now, Sell Now on ET Now. And yes, Nifty seeing a slight bit of a recovery from the day's lowest point. Let's mark that and pull up the day's chart as well. So yes, Nifty is at 22,170 levels, down 6 tenths of a percent in trade. So yes, that from the lowest point, we're seeing slight bit of a recovery there. So let's watch out for that. But with that, let's get started with the rapid fire format for taking all the stock-related queries. Kunal, the first one is for you. Uh, Satya wants to know for um, Borosil Renewables or Mother Sumi Wirings, What's uh, looking as a good bet for the next one year for that, if they had to pick a stock? None of them, frankly. Alright, Kunal, uh, six months target on RVNL, Gaurav Mohindra is holding the stock from a price of 217 rupees. Expecting the stock to be sideways, near term targets you can keep probably maybe closer to 295-300. Uh, Vivek, what's your view on uh, GHCL for the long term? Uh, valuation wise, very comfortable levels and I think uh, Specialty chemicals should recover. All right, Vivi, your view on Excite Industries. V. Venkatesh wants a long term view where he's already holding the stock from a price of 400 rupees. I see most of the juice has already been taken out. I think uh, 525, 550 levels should be the max. Sure. Uh, the next query is on, uh, you know, Kunal, if uh, the viewer wants to know if they to pick up a stock in the Nifty IT or the Nifty FMCG space, one stock uh, for the next two years. I would believe uh, Wipro uh, as well as TCS could be better bets in the IT names. All right, Kunal, uh, HPC, is HPCL a good buy at current market price for a short term trade? This query is from Chandra Babu. Not from a short term trade, but yeah, from a long term trade, you can continue, you can start buying at current levels, but keep on some powder drive for averaging out at low levels. Vivek RK wants to know uh, Escorts, TVS Motors, Aisha Motors for the long term time period of two years, what should they look at in the auto sector? TVS Motors. Uh should be looked at uh, for long term, followed by Xbox. Alright, Vivek, uh, do you believe that Varun Beverages is a good buy at current market price? This query is from Poonam. Uh, at this price, it looks costly. So, on tips, yes, it's a great company, but on tips, it uh, Kunal Shashila wants to know in terms of DV Realty shares, they bought at 233 rupees, exit or hold? Hold. Okay, Kunal Santosh wants to know is this the right time to buy Canara Bank or Titan, but for the long term, what's your view? Well, yeah, it's a very good price to buy these stocks at current levels. Vivek Spanna Spurti, uh, Mr. Reddy from Hyderabad wants to know, is it a good bet for the long term? They're already holding 350 shares there. Yes, long term looks good. Okay, Kunal, your view on ITC. Subrata Mukherjee wants to know, um, should he go ahead and buy this for the next 6 months to 12 months? Very bullish on the stock, but I would probably just wait out for a confirmation about 445. That could take the stock back about 200 moving average and will look much better. Okay, that was the last query for today. So, thank you so much, uh, Kunal, as well as Vivek, for joining in with us. As always, giving us your expert opinion for all the stock uh, related queries that our viewers have. But uh, yes, uh, with that, you know, we're winding down this edition of Buy Now, Sell Now. But uh, do not forget that Air India Express has actually run into fresh turbulence a day after the senior crew members uh, called in sick and um, it was a mass bunking.
thing that happened there. It is now uh, being learned that some of these employees who t uh, called in sick have been terminated. Uh, my colleague uh, Sumit Chaturvedi, who's been tracking this very closely, is uh, joining in with us to give us more details and the latest update that is happening here, Sumit. So we have reached Delhi airport where in Air India Express flights have been cancelled. Over 70 flights have been cancelled today. If we talk about problems, the problem started when crew members reported sick yesterday. Well, today it's expected a town hall will happen with management as far as crew members are concerned. Around 25 of the crew members have been fired by Air India Express management already. So if the crisis becomes is looking that it's becoming bigger, the problem stems from the fact that the merger of Air India with Vistara Air India Express is not going as per uh, the schedule. Uh, also, the problems are, are still there when it comes to seniority, pay, and other issues. Well, employees wrote a letter to N. Chandrasekharan, Tata Sun Chairman on April 26. Uh, they say the their, their, their demands were not uh, paid attention to, and that's why they resorted to this kind of mass sick leave. Now, airline has taken the action against those, those people who went on mass sick leave, terminating them. It doesn't look like the airline. Uh, is going to reinstate them also. So the problems are there. Also, it's coming at a time when the uh, annual vacation season is coming here in June. Yesterday, Civil Aviation Ministry, they told Air India Express that uh, they have to ensure all passengers, the flyers, should get all the services they are entitled to. It looks that they, it's not going to be an easy flight from here on for Tata Sun's own airlines, including Air India, Vistara and Air India Express. If you like this video then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.